Kevin Feige reveals new details about Marvel Phase 4. Even though we are inching closer and closer to finding out whether or not the Avengers will defeat Thanos and bring half of the universe back to life in Avengers Endgame, that's not stopping fans from looking off into the not-too-distant future to find out what's next for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, specifically in Phase 4. Obviously, the big elephant in the room now is how will Marvel incorporate the X-Men and Fantastic Four into the MCU since they were acquired in the Disney-Fox deal, and would we start to see them sprinkled throughout Phase 4? Well, up until this week, MCU mastermind Kevin Feige has been light on specifics, but now he has revealed a little bit about what to expect, or even more specifically, what not to expect about the next chapter in the Marvel films. In an interview with our friends over at io9, Feige laid out that there is a five-year plan in play with two major directions in which Phase 4 is heading. It is two very distinct things, and I hope they'll feel very distinct, but there is a similar mentality going into it, which is, how can we continue to tell stories with some of the characters that audiences already know and love in a unique way, in a different way, in a surprising way, of which we have a lot of plans and ideas and work already going into it? Then, how can we introduce new characters that even hardcore fans come comic fans have barely known or barely heard of, that's really exciting too. So it sounds like Phase 4 will be bringing us fresh new takes on characters we know and love, as well as introducing us to lesser-known characters from Marvel Comics canon. Considering what we've previously heard about the upcoming MCU film slate, everything that's been announced does fall into one of those two categories. On the docket, we've got Doctor Strange 2, Black Panther 2, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, and a Black Widow solo film, which take up the slots of characters that we know and love. And then there's The Eternals and Shang-Chi, which could arguably fit into the barely known or barely heard of category. But what about the prodigal superheroes who have finally returned to the House of Ideas, the X-Men, and the Fantastic Four? When asked about whether the X-Men might be joining the MCU for Phase 4, Feige intimated that you might not want to hold your breath. It'll be a while, it's all just beginning, and the five-year plan that we've been working on, we were working on before any of that was set. So really, it's much more, for us, less about specifics of when and where the X-Men will appear right now, and more just the comfort factor and how nice it is that they're home. That they're all back, but it will be a very long time. Given that there is almost two decades worth of X-Men film lore that was created while the mutants were under the Fox banner, it seems like giving fans some time to let the previous iterations of the X-Men fade from memory is a good idea. Hell, we still haven't even seen the final two entries of the Fox X-Men era, Dark Phoenix and the New Mutants, both of which are still slated for release this year. So what does this all mean for how Phase 4 will play out? Well, as we mentioned, The Eternals is underway, with Angelina Jolie and Kumail Nanjiani recently rumored to be joining the cast, and we know that James Gunn is officially back in for Guardians 3, though production will have to start after Gunn fulfills his obligations to DC with Suicide Squad. Add the aforementioned sequels to Doctor Strange and Black Panther, as well as Black Widow's solo film, all of which seem to be in various levels of development, and it appears Phase 4 is moving right along. However, while the majority of the X-Men are being put on ice, it does seem Disney is keen to get at least one of the Merry Mutants into the MCU a little sooner than later. Deadpool! Disney head honcho Bob Iger has made it clear they're pushing the Merc with the mouth front and center by literally putting him front and center on the Disney homepage. The big question is, how and when will Wade Wilson pop up alongside the other MCU heroes? Not exactly sure when, but it'll reportedly be in some R-rated capacity. But what about the other big property, the Fantastic Four? While Feige didn't mention the FF in the interview, we have known for a while that Phase 4 will be heading the way of the cosmic, as evidenced by upcoming films like The Eternals. And who better to represent cosmic adventures than the FF? That's what I'm talking That's about. So pretty nice. <laughs> now with the Thanos storyline wrapping up soon, Marvel is going to need a new big bad, and as far as Marvel villains go, the Fantastic Four have some of the best big bads in all of comicdom, Kang the Conqueror, Galactus, Annihilus, the Super Scroll, and of course, the biggest bad of them all, Doctor Doom. Now, it's been reported that Legion writer Noah Hawley has been in touch with Kevin Feige about his Doctor Doom script, so there is a strong chance that Feige is prepping the first family for Phase 4. And as we've said before, the tagline is right there waiting Marvel's fantastic Phase 4, it's too good not to use. Ugh, no. Kidding me? Regardless, we won't have to wait long to get all of our Phase 4 questions answered. Feige said once Spider-Man Far From Home has hit theaters, he will be more than forthcoming about what fans can expect for the future phase. And what do you know, Comic-Con and its Hall H are going to be rolling out two weeks after Spider-Man drops. Could we get our answers then? Read between the lines, yuppers. Oh, that's going to be insane.
I don't even know. That's going to be nuts. But what do you folks think? Are you excited for Phase 4? What other obscure Marvel characters do you hope get their own standalone movies? And what is your favorite comic book character Chris Evans has played? Captain America, Johnny Storm, Lucas Lee, Jensen from The Losers, or Curtis from Snowpiercer? I liked Lucas Lee. Let's discuss! Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, and mash that little bell to get notified every time we go live with the show or drop a new video. And starting Monday, we'll be talking all things Game of Thrones with our weekly after show, All Kings Considered. Join myself, fellow Nerdist favorites like Dan Casey and Amy Vorpal, and more special guests as we break down everything happening in Westeros this season. Biggest moments, wildest theories, episode MVPs. We're going to get into all of it and more. Pull up a chair, pour yourself a goblet of Dornish wine, and tune in every Monday at 12 p.m. Pacific right here on Nerdist's YouTube and Geek & Sundry's Twitch.